Hello, my name is Gage Cornelius, and I'm here to demonstrate the capabilities of my Pi menu system. Now, last week, I believe it was last week, I submitted a video, and uh, I didn't realize how quiet I was. So, this week will be a little different, and uh, I uh, got some feedback from Epic, and I took it to heart, and so I'm back with a vengeance. So... This is my second submission video for the my hierarchical dynamic high menu system. Now, the reason I call it that is because it's not just a single menu. It's not just uh, it's it's more than just a template. It, everything's all the work's already been done for you, and it's really in that it'll take a matter of moments, literally moments, to get the high menu system working any new menus you can add it automatically does everything for you it automatically makes the menus all you got to do is set a few variables and you're pretty much set so let me show you what i have here so as you may recall oh, by the way uh, this pi menu system has controller support so uh, you can set it so you can toggle the menu on and off you can hold it uh, you can actually put in variables, or actually, uh, they're just booleans that you either decide whether it's true or false, such as um, whether the mouse indicator shows up when the menu's open. It automatically detects whether you're using the mouse or the gamepad, and it'll switch accordingly. Because if I decide to move my mouse, oh, give me a second, oh, that's working. If I move my mouse, it'll go based off of mouse position. Um, but right now, I have the mouse mouse actually turned off so i cannot see the icon but that was personal preference it's as, it's ex extremely simple to go in and change that so by default black projectiles single shot spherical now a couple things i added I added a center indicator which is optional as well as the outer indicator also optional and they're both customizable so if you wanted them to be in every single menu you you could have them in every single menu. If you wanted them to have their own uh, appearance, you could do that as well. Now, um, I will say that uh, there, there's really very few limits. I mean, I've thought of, of just about everything. The opacity of the menu is one th is is uh, one thing, and the glow does not have its own opacity well technically it has a, a there's a variable for glow brightness which if you obviously made it a uh float between zero and one it would make it um, transparent greater than one just makes the glow stronger i have mine by default at one now in this menu you can see every single section has its own text and wherever you're pointing your mouse or wherever the the whatever menu you're highlighting, the center indicator will point towards it and the outer indicator will point towards the center one, but be in the position of which uh, that, that you're pointing in. So if I go to project that color, notice this menu does not have any text on the actual pies itself. It just has a text in the center and notice the center indicator is gone. The outer indicator, however, stays as well as the glowing, the little red glow around the border. So uh, as you go through the colors, it not only does the uh, text change to match whatever option you're highlighting, it also changes to match the color of the option of the color option that you're highlighting. So let's see, now I'm going to choose blue. Spears, la da dee, la da dee. <laughs> All right, I can go to project those shapes. Here I still have the um, text on the menus themselves. It works very nicely. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there will be a certain point where the size of your text and the size of each individual Pi menu option will actually make a difference. But that's uh, currently not affecting... That, that that's as long if if you know how many options you have and you know how many options to put around 
or the text that's going around, then you should be fine. And also you can um, dynamically, there's a variable that I have that dictates the size of this pie menu and everything from the indicators to the, from the indicators to the um, text, everything will, will scale down to whatever size you set it to. So if you, so right now I have it set to uh, the scale at one and the pie menus in the center at 512 by 512. So if you were to set that to two, it'd blow up the pie menu and everything would be 1024 by 1024. So, uh, let's see, I'm gonna choose capsules. Two capsules, yay. Now, the firing mode, single shot, and you see I have it set so the, the, the text in the center auto wraps, which is nice, but a bit of nice. Try shot burst and automatic. So let's go to try shot burst for now. Uh, let me display that whether it's a mouse click or whether it's a gamepad click, whatever the main, whatever the option is set to, I don't need to do that. Of course, this is just an example just for, for people to sort of understand how this, how the entire thing goes. But it's it's really dynamic. I mean, single shot, changes to try shot burst, whether it's a mouse click or it's the gamepad, it'll do only that. And double tapping doesn't do a single thing. Uh, so it keeps, uh, I have it so it's keeping track of uh, when the uh, shooting is actually done for it to actually you know okay i'm available to for you to press the uh the, the the firing button again so pretty nice change the color again i like violets yay i do pyramids i think i'm on capsule yep i'm capsule so i'm gonna do purple pyramids Huzzah! firing mode automatic So, as long as you hold something down, whether it's mouse or gamepad, it'll fire. Now, all of this is, um, most of the work is already done as far as being able to set up a pie menu. Now, from the pie menu, whatever, say, if you want to change the color of the character, Right now he's a little gray. If you want to say you want that's what you wanted to change. You wanted to make him a different color. You just set up a pie menu with the different colors. Uh, if you want to add an option to the main menu that I have here, you could. Or if you wanted to make your own pie menu you, again, you could do that as well. Oh, and another thing, because it's hierarchical. Whenever I go to a menu and I press either B on the gamepad or uh, right face button on the gamepad, or if I press uh, Escape on the keyboard, which obviously won't work in this current uh, play mode, it'll go back to the previous menu, if it has a parent. If it does not have a parent, such as this one, this one is the main menu, then when you press the back button, it'll just close. And you can set it so that, say, you want it to go into a menu, and then uh, there's an option so that it, when you when you choose whatever you want at a certain menu, if you wanted to, when you press the, the, the pie menu button, the top, uh, when you pressed it again, it would not take you to the main menu and it could keep you there. So like I said, everything has already been thought of, everything's already done for, and it's just right there waiting for someone to just put stuff in it. and. The bulk of the work is already done. I mean, <laughs> you could set every single option has like the, 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 the text. There's also a subtext and there's icons that you could, if you wanted to put icons, you could put icons. If you wanted a subtext, so say um, you had a menu that had guns. So the guns could, could um, 
be the main icon. You could have a subtext under it telling you how much ammo you have. And when you highlight each individual gun, it could tell you in the center what gun you're highlighting. So it's extremely dynamic. All you got to do is set a few variables in the Pi menu. Every single Pi menu has tons of variables. But unless you're using every single one of them, the work is minimal. You only, you only uh, check the booleans of what you're going to use. So here, I don't have the center text activated, so it's just a boolean. Center text, yes, sir, true or false. It's false, but I have the center indicator set to true. So the center indicator is on. I have the outer indicator set to true, so that one's uh, available to see. I have the, 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 the main menu text, which is what you see there projectile color, projectile shape, and firing mode. All of those are set to, uh, in this menu, it's set to true. In the color menu, it's set to false, but the center indicator is also set to false while the center text is set to true. And I also have it set so that uh, I didn't have to make this, these, these menu options twice. Yes, it is two different options for each individual Pi. Because there's, there's uh, options such as uh, Pi color and Pi color all. So with pie color all, you just define each every single one. Pie color is just a single color for the entire menu, for that specific entire menu. Pie color all is an array of colors, of linear colors, I should say, so that you can define every single space. Now, all I did in the construction for the color menu, I set the uh, center text color all array to be equal to the pie color all array. So... I only did the work once. I made all these colors once, and all I did was, uh, when it was constructed, I set for the center text array of colors to be equal to the pi array of colors. And again, those are just variables. A boolean, it checks four booleans, and it's very, I think, it's very well made. It's very well done in the sense that, say, you want to have... Um, all the, the, the colors, well, everything sequenced, I should say, in the HUD. So it, it checks for all the variables, but only checks for the uh, sort of the root variable. So for this one, center text, if center text is off, then it collapses the text in the HUD, in the UMG HUD. It collapses it and sets all the settings to default. So the text would be white, the shadow is black, but it's collapsed, so you can't see it. So... If you have it set to true, but you have the color set to off, it makes the text visible, but it defaults the, the, the actual colors of the text, which is white for the actual text and black for the shadow. So, again, a lot of the work's already done. It will not check to see the color of every single... It won't check the, the, the main menu... The, the, the main text here. It will not check to see the colors and the shadows for this if you have it set to off or if you, even if you have the, the, the color for um, the colors on but you have the, the array of colors off it'll only go that far so it's not checking a million variables it's just checking variables as far as each option goes so if you want to custom if you have it set so you, yes you are customizing the the uh, the array or I'm sorry, the pie. If you are customizing the color of the pie, it'll check to, uh, for that variable specifically. If you have it set to off, then it just moves on, and it's sequenced. So it's just doing each um, section twice, each section, each each um, group of variables. So the pie menu, uh, the, the colors for the pie menu is one option. The, te the regular text that you see there is one option. Uh, I should say another option. The subtext is another option. The icons are another option. And within all of those options you have, for the icons, you have the, the picture that you're going to set. It's an array, actually. Um, so for the, all the different types of text, you have the, whether it's one text for all or an array of text. But it'll only check it as far as you go. So for the subtext, if I wanted so that the subtext color was uh, dependent on... Uh, if the subtext color was, or, you know, just like I do here, all of these colors, it'll check for the, the pie. Does the pie menu have, uh, allow colors? A boolean, pie menu, uh, pie menu color, boolean, true or false. 
If it's true, then it checks uh, you color all. If that's true, then we have what we said here. I, I, I made nine menu options and uh, I just made two arrays. That's it. One for the names and one for the colors to match the names. That's all I did. And then I said um, the variable is so at, on the construction, the array for the colors for the center text was the same as the pi. I'm sorry if I, I'm reiterating a couple things. I just, um, I tend to do that. <laughs> uh, so, oh, and by the way, you don't have to, the, the pi menus themselves, they're made dynamically. This is an array. This main menu is an array of three options. So it knows to uh, divide each section into three. This is an array of nine options, so it divides it into nine. Array of three, divides it into three. An array of six, so it divides it into six. It automatically does everything for you. If you wanted to add things, if you decide I want more options or I want less options, all you do is add and remove those options from the uh, main array. It's just an array of names because that's what's the, really the uh, main variable. It does all the mathematics for you. It does everything for you, even the uh, the the the, the texture for the pie menu itself is dynamic and um, if you wanted to change the, uh, the size of that hole in the middle of the pie menu you could do that as well that's extremely simple extraordinarily simple so everything's done automatically for you all you have to do is make the arrays in your set so I hope that this video demonstrates the capacity of this hierarchical dynamic pie menu because it is exactly that. You can you have children menus and you have uh, parent menus. And actually, uh, technically, there are no children menus because that would just, that could be uh, potentially chaotic, especially if you're defining in one menu uh, the other one. Uh, or, you know, if you're making a one menu out of another, you're creating a child blueprint out of a main blueprint. The problem with that is that you'd have to erase the options that are in the child to then make your own. So it's just a matter of it's um, how it works is you could have as many options as you want and you just have to make an option at the menu for each of those options. So if you wanted a menu that had uh, 10 things which would all take you to a different pie menu, you just make those 10 different pie menus first and then there's an array in which you set those uh, pie menus in and it'll automatically load whatever you do. And obviously for those pie menus, you'd have to, there's an option for the parent. You just set the parent being whatever it is and it'll load it automatically. All the work's already done. All you gotta do is set the names, whatever fancy uh, options you want. If you don't want fancy options, that's fine. You set the names, uh, you set whatever fancy options you want, if any. And you set the parents, if any, you set the, uh, what menus redirect to which ones, if any, and that's it. That's really it. So I hope that this more detailed, this more detailed and better explained version of the hierarchical pie menu with such a prettier uh, pie menu now. I do apologize for the last time, but my own math wasn't doing the trick in the materials, so I had to brush up on my trigonometry but i got it <laughs> so i hope this is worthy of being submitted to the marketplace thank you very much for your consideration if you like it subscribe i'm planning in the future to uh, make some videos to show algorithmic blueprinting so that'll be really exciting but uh, i hope that this was entertaining and not just lots and lots of minutes with me rambling insensically. So, <laughs> all right.